I hope everyone's having a great day. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for joining me for this video. We're looking here at one of the primary mean value theorems, that which was devised and derived by a French mathematician Lagrange. The mean value theorem applies to those functions where you have a continuity over a closed interval a and b, and you have a differentiability over the open interval a comma b. Normally, polynomial functions, rational functions, trigonometric functions, and radical functions automatically satisfy this so long as these values here, a and b, fall within the domain of those functions. If that is the case, you don't even have to worry about satisfying this. The primary depiction is this. You have a certain value c which falls within the interval a and b. If c were to be placed in the derivative of that function, it would very well equal this concept over here. And if you look at this concept right here, you're looking at something which looks like y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, which represents the slope between two points a and b with regards to the function. And that right there equals the slope of a secant line. So there's a specific point out there which falls very well between the interval a and b. If you have an interval a comma b, there's some value c which is falling in between this. If you were to determine the slope of the tangent line at point C, it would very well equal the slope of that secant line. It would be parallel to that secant line. The slope of the secant and the slope of the tangent at that point would be parallel to one another. That is a good concept of an existence theorem that within a certain interval for a function, there exists a special quality and that special quality is this. The slope of the secant line will very well equal the slope of the tangent line at some point in between and within that interval. How can you graphically show that to be the case? Well, you can. If you have some function which looks like this, here's my A point, here's my B point on the function and you were to draw a secant line over here. That right there represents a secant line which connects between two points. Yeah, we're seeing a third point here, but very well that point could have been right here. Here could have been my A, here could have been my B. But at some point between this interval A and B, there could be a point C. If you were to look at this tangent line slope and you were to look at the slope of the secant line, they would be parallel to each other and we know parallel lines have the same slope. So at that specific point, the slope of the secant line and the slope of the tangent line would be the same. So you have to find this specific point between an interval A and B where you can find that to be the case. And that case very well is easy for I will say it again, polynomial, rational, trigonometric, and radical functions. What is the main significance of this mean value theorem? It is this, that it allows you to obtain information of a function, the parental function, by utilizing and analyzing information of its derivative. You are kind of thinking and working backwards. If you have a derivative and you have certain information of that derivative, you can go backwards and utilize that information to know more about your parental function. Let a certain function be x minus two sine x, and we have a certain closed interval, and let that be minus pi to pi. Within this interval for this given function, is there a certain value c such that it is an element of a and b, and it would have that property that we are looking at here, where the slope of the secant would be equal to the slope of the tangent at a specific point. We can find that out. The first thing you want to do when you're looking at these type of questions is just go for the derivative and write it out. What's the derivative of x minus 2 sine x? It would be 1 minus 2 cosine x. You have that part done. Another thing you want to do is just find f of a and find f of b and put those values aside. If you put f of a into this function, you have minus pi minus 0 and it would be just minus pi. And then you can do f of b, you can put pi right here, and in places of x, pi minus sine of pi is a zero, you just have a pi. You can also do b minus a and put that value aside. When you do b minus a, you have pi minus minus pi, you have two pi. And now what we do is we think about the mean value theorem in its equation format, and we have the derivative of the function c placed into that, and then we have f of b minus f of a, over b minus a. When you place c into the derivative, you're placing the c value into the derivative. Here's my derivative. You're doing 1 minus 2 cosine c. I'm placing c into the derivative. I'm placing a variable into the derivative. And then I equal it to this. What's f of b minus f of a? Well, it's pi minus minus pi over b minus a, which is a 2 pi. 
simplify this out. You have a 2 pi divided by 2 pi, which is a 1. So I know now 1 minus 2 cosine c is equal to 1, minus 2 cosine c is equal to 0, cosine c is equal to 0, 2 going on the other side is 0 is out, and c is equal to the inverse cosine of 0, which is a pi over 2. So there indeed, for this function, is a certain value c. And c here very well appears to be an element of a and b. It is very well an element of a and b, and we should ideally be using here circular parentheses because it's not equal to a or b, but it is within a or b. So this depicts it better. So there's an element C which falls within A and B, but it is not either A or B, and that value is pi over two and very well falls over here. If you were to determine the slope of the secant line between minus pi and pi for this function, and you were to determine the slope of the tangent line at point C on your function, both would be parallel and they both would be the same. And that right there is the mean value theorem. The specific property exists such that there is a value c in this interval where the slope at that point c is equal to the slope of the secant. Let's do the same exercise with this function right here. f of t equals 3t squared plus 2t plus 5, a good polynomial function. You know the domain is minus infinity to infinity for a polynomial, quadratic functions especially, and then you have this. Very well, it would be continuous. Very well, it would be differentiable over that closed and open interval. Let's set the derivative aside and we'll have it right here. The derivative of this would be 6t plus 2. And then we can also do some of the other items. We can do f of a. Here's my a, here's my b. We can determine that. You're putting minus 1 in here, you'll have a 3. 3 minus 2 plus 5, which is equal to a 6. And then we can do f of b, which will be 1 going in here. We'll have a 3 plus 2 plus 5, which is a 10. We can do b minus a, which will be 1 minus minus 1, which will be a 2. Now we're looking for a certain c such that it would have a tangent line slope equal to the slope of this secant line over these two points. Is such a point existing? It should, but we'll find out. We know the formula is this, is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Think about it, this right here is your slope of the secant, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. And you're looking here at the c, the c value placed into the derivative of your function plus two should equal this quotient over here. What's f of b? It's a 10. What's f of a? It's a six. What's this? It's a two. 10 minus six is a four divided by two is a two. All of this should equal to that. Six c plus two is equal to two. Six c is equal to zero and c is equal to zero. So there certainly is a point and that point is zero. And zero well, very well falls within a and b. c is certainly an element of a and b. This is zero falls in this interval and at the point is zero, you would have a slope of the tangent line very well equal to the slope of the secant line for the function. The tangent line in terms of the derivative slope over there would equal the secant line of your function and you have that point existing in this function. Let's look at this atypical function in terms of this mean value theorem for our last one. We have a 2 e to the power of x plus 1. You know if you put a 0 in place of that x in terms of a y-intercept, 2 times 1 is a 2 plus 1. You have a y-intercept 0 comma 3. We don't have to really mark it down, but because this coefficient 2, it would make a pretty steep here exponential function. You would see that to be the case. We have an interval minus 2 to 2. That's a closed interval. It's not your typical function like the polynomial, radical, rational, or trigonometric, but it indeed is a function with a minus infinity to positive infinity domain, minus two comma two, whether it's closed or open interval, very well falls in there. It should be continuous and it should be differentiable over that closed and open interval. So it satisfies the first two conditions. Anyhow, let's start here with the derivative of this. It will be two e to the x. That's what it would be. And then we're looking here in terms of f of a, we have a minus two. You can say that two e to the minus two plus one. And then f of b is gonna be two e to the two plus one. b minus a would be two minus minus two, which would be four. We're not drawing anything to scale, but this is minus two and this is two. If you had a two points over here, your secant would look very much like that. That's a slope of the secant which you would understand and analyze from right here, a certain slope of that secant line, but that right there is my secant line from my a to b point. You know you have to look at something like this 
in terms of your formula f of b minus f of a over your b minus a which right here is your slope of the secant line formula the derivative here is 2e to the x but here we have to put a c into the place because we'll solve for that c 2e to the power of c is equal to all of this what's f of b well it's going to be 2e squared plus 1 what's f of a it'll be 2e to the minus 2 plus 1 what's b minus a it'll be 4 what we can do here is take the 2 on the other side when you take the 2 on the other side it'll divide with everything and this 4 will become an 8 another thing we can do is actually solve for the c you bring in the natural log c is equal to the natural log of e which is meaningless but it will be equal to the natural log of this entire quotient because you know the properties of natural logs it's going to equal the natural log of this entire quotient so let's write it out natural log and we'll put it here better 2e squared plus 1 minus 2e to the minus 2 plus 1 all over 8 what i want to do here in terms of the c value is utilize my scientific calculator and compute this quotient and i'll put the quotient over there i'll basically work in this direction and divide everything by 8 this entire quotient is equal to 1.8134 and then I have to do the natural log of that to get the C value when I do I get 0.595 but 0.595 I'm on around to 0.6 between minus 2 and 2 there's a certain value if this right here is 1.6 is right here and here's 0.6 in terms of the x-axis value here's minus 2 2 0.6 falls very well in between if you do a tangent line at 0.6 on your function right you will get a tangent line which is parallel to your secant line and there it is. We have in this function indeed a specific point between minus 2 and 2 which has a specific and special property that the slope at that specific point, the slope of your derivative at point C is equal to the slope of the secant. The slope of the tangent is equal to the slope of the secant. Very well, C is an element of A and B, and it fulfills that specific criteria. And this question has been completed. The video is completed. So keep in mind the mean value theorem. We're looking here, examining at a specific property where you have a point between an interval. That point, the slope of the tangent is equal to the slope of the secant over that interval. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.